Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read The Unicorn Prince by Saviour Perotta. I love the illustrations in this book. Hope you like it too. The Unicorn Prince. High on a hill where the moors ended and the forest began, stood a lonely castle. It had once been glorious, but now the wind howled through its forgotten corridors and rain pelted in through its broken roof. Only two people lived in the castle, a young woman called Annis and her grandmother. The only warm, dry spot in this crumbling castle was in front of the great fireplace, and it was there that Annis and her grandmother slept, along with their chickens and their cow. It was a bit of a squeeze. But Annis's dreams were as wild and free as the forest and moor she loved so well. One day, Annis was looking for firewood in the forest when she heard a soft whimpering coming from inside a bramble patch. She peered through the branches and there, looking at her with eyes of summer sky blue, was a unicorn. In his foot was a sharp bramble thorn. You can see it there. Annis's heart swelled with pity Carefully, she prized the thorn from the unicorn's foot. I will take you back to the castle, she told him. Grandma has a potion that will heal your foot and bandages to bind it. To take the unicorn's mind from the pain, she sang softly to him all the way home. That night, his foot bandaged and soothed by the healing potion, the unicorn slept in front of the fireplace next to Annis and Grandma. It was a bit of a squeeze, but Annis's dreams were wild and free, and so were the unicorns. The unicorn stayed on in the castle, cared for by Annis. After a few days, his foot had healed and he was strong enough for Annis to ride on his back. Round and round the castle they went, until eventually they were ready for a real adventure. That night, they galloped over the moors and through the deep, echoing forest. Dewdrops sparkled like diamonds on the ferns, and thick branches tangled overhead. And Annis sang for joy. Over hill and over moor go Annis and her unicorn. Through the trees along the stream, the jewelled night is like a dream. One moonlit evening, as they rode through the forest, Annis and the unicorn passed a small farm. Nestled in the branches of a nearby tree, was a family of fairies, each one no bigger than a baby's hand. Their gossamer wings trembled in the breeze. Annis gasped with surprise. That farm was our home for many years, the fairies explained. But the new owners have turned us out. They will not spare bread and milk for us and our children. Annis knew she must help. Without a thought, she offered the fairies shelter in the castle. The roof leaks, but it's nice and dry by the great fireplace, she told them. And there is milk and bread to spare. That night, it was more of a squeeze than ever in front of the great fireplace. But while Annis and her grandma, the unicorn, the chickens and the cow slept soundly, 
the fairies crept away from the hearth and set to work. All night long, their silver needles flashed and their golden hammers rang out. Look at them sewing. And when the sun rose the next morning, a magical sight awaited Annis and her grandma. The walls of the castle had been repaired. The roof was mended and bright curtains hung at every window. The fairies had also found a chest full of shimmering gowns, which they had washed and darned. Annis put one on. It was like wearing the softest, sweetest smelling cloud. A dress fit for a princess, the fairies declared, and the unicorn nodded in agreement. That night, thanks to the fairies' hard work, there was no need for everyone to sleep squashed in front of the great fireplace. Grandma moved into one of the fine bedrooms. Annis picked a chamber with views of the forest. The fairies chose to live in a tower. The unicorn set up home in the library. While the cow settled in the bathroom with the chickens. News of the magnificent castle on the hill and the beautiful young woman who lived there spread quickly across the land. Within days, princes came from far and wide to ask for Annis's hand in marriage. They brought with them costly gifts, bowls of diamonds, bags of gold and boxes of shining silver. Annis had never seen such riches. The Prince of the North was first to arrive, bearing a chest of brilliant pearls. Will you marry me, Annis? he asked. I will marry you, said Annis, if you can answer one question. Would you share our castle with the fairy folk? No, fairies cannot be trusted, the Prince declared. They are thieves and cheats. In that case, said Annis firmly, I cannot marry you. Next came the prince of the east. Annis listened to his proposal, then asked him the same question. Would you share your castle with a fairy folk? Certainly not, huffed the prince. Fairies are pests, like mice and rats. What a nuisance they would be. In that case, said Annis, I will not marry you. The Prince of the West arrived next. Fairies bring bad luck, he sniffed when Annis asked her question. And the Prince of the South just laughed. <laughs> Fairies don't exist. What a ridiculous idea. Annis turned them all away, and each time the unicorn stamped his hoof and whinnied with delight. But the unkindness of the princes filled Annis's heart with sorrow. If you were a prince, she asked the unicorn, would you share your castle with the fairies and anyone else who needed a home? The unicorn's blue eyes sparkled and he nodded as if to say yes. If only you were a man, sighed Annis, then I would marry you. At her words, the unicorn's horn began to glow, filling the room with dazzling light. Suddenly, in the unicorn's place, stood a handsome young man with a golden star on his forehead. I am a man, Annis, a prince, he cried. 
many years ago, a wicked witch put a spell on me. It could only be broken by the love of a truly kind heart, like yours. Will you marry me, Annis? he asked. Annis laughed for joy. Yes, she cried, and we will offer a home to the fairies for as long as we live. Hundreds of fairies came to help Annis and the Unicorn Prince celebrate their wedding. The feasting and dancing lasted all day and all night. Laughter and song rang out over the hills and the castle sparkled with the light of a thousand candles. And from that day on, Annis, her prince, her grandma, their chickens, their cow, and the loyal fairy folk lived happily in the castle, offering food and shelter to all those who came knocking, whoever they might be. And every once in a while, when the moon is full and the dew sparkles like diamonds on the heather, Annis's prince turns back into a unicorn and they go galloping through the forest and over the magical moors. Who knows if you might not meet them one moonlit night. Well, I'm glad that they lived happily ever after and they were so kind to the fairies. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.